number 12 units of the KC first of all we check that they are all in equal states none of them are solids because if solids then we do not express them in KC so once we know that they are all equals we can put them in terms of the concentration when raised to the power of the ratio so we have the products on top divided by the reactants and then we focus on the power power 2 and 3 we have 5 1 and 2 we have 3 and then 5 and 3 we can simplify as cancel out to be 2 power 2 overall so since concentration is more per dm cube and if you have concentration square we have more square dm minus 6 13 what happens when we burn CH3SH in excess air your carbon will become CO2 Sulfur will become sulfur dioxide, your hydrogen will become water. Right. Sulfur dioxide might eventually become sulfur trioxide after oxidation in the atmosphere, but that will not happen immediately. So these are the sulfur dioxide will be the main product. 14. This is a cross section of a river or a lake where we have fertilizers being flush into the river what happens is the algae will will grow very rapidly on top okay so number one and then when they do that the sunlight will not be able to reach the bottom uh, plants at the bottom so the plants at the bottom will die due to the lack of sunlight and when they die they decompose and the decomposition will use up oxygen and then there will be a a drop in oxygen level okay, that will also affect the other living things in the lake also so Q P and then R 15 is a bit of recall question uh, ma manufacture of chlorine from from brine so your anode will be your chlorides becoming chlorine gas your cathode your reduction water becoming hydrogen gas and your at the end node you require titanium the cathode you will be using steel sixteen sodium iodide and sulfuric acid the species that has been oxidized if we check throughout Okay, the one that has changed is iodine becoming or iodide becoming iodine so that's an increase in oxidation number minus one to zero so your iodide is oxidized the oxidizing agent is your sulfuric acid 17 the changes of formation hydrogen chloride and hydrogen iodide I write out the equation here and they tell us that it's minus 92 it's more exothermic for hydrogen chloride than hydrogen iodide so we will focus on the last two statements in terms of the bond energy you can refer to the data booklet so chlorine is 242 but since it's half we have to divide by 2 so it's 121 one. same for this all right, and then we have the bond energy for HCl and HI in the data booklet also. Now, then we see the bond energy for HI is smaller than the bond energy of HCl. Bond energy of HI is smaller than bond energy of HCl. That is true. Bond energy of I is smaller than bond energy of Cl2. That is also true. Okay, but then which one makes a bigger difference? most important we can see that the difference between your i2 and cl2 is about 40 40 plus kilojoules whereas the difference between hcl and hi is more than 100 kilojoules 
so the the one that really makes the difference is the bond energy difference between your HI and HCl. So although both statements are correct, C is the one that has more impact. Okay, because there are more difference for HCl and HI compared to Cl2 and I2. Eighteen. We have lime compound, calcium compounds. Both of them, fresh and old, react with hydrochloric acid but only the O will give off gases. So this is an in indication that the O lime motor is calcium carbonate. Okay, so these are two reactions, calcium carbonate giving off gas. The other one is your fresh lime, which is a calcium compound that is much softer. So that will be your calcium hydroxide. And then they say which describes the change from fresh to O. So we have to figure out this is my starting calcium hydroxide fresh and then we end up with calcium carbonate which is the whole one okay which is given by option D if you're wondering why not calcium oxide calcium oxide is not much softer than calcium carbonate right? this is the difference in softness is not as much but calcium hydroxide is much softer than calcium carbonate okay? you are using this line it changes into a much harder form 19 these three species have the same number of electrons in which order do their radii increase if the radius increases it means that the smallest one must have the most protons to hold in the electrons the largest one will have the least proton and in order of that calcium will have the most protons calcium 2 plus will be the smallest Bromine and propene undergo addition reaction. We get your dibromo propene or propane, dibromo propane. Option A, it exists as cis trans, there's no double bonds, so not relevant. It is more volatile than propene. Pro 1, 2 dibromo propane is permanent dipole, which will be higher than your propene, which is induced dipole. So this one is less volatile. Chiral center, there's no carbon that's joined to. There's a carbon here. A mistake. The carbon here is joined to four different groups. So it has a chiral carbon. It doesn't have hydrogen bonding. There's no hydrogen joined directly to N, O, or F. So C is the answer. Your chiral carbon here. 21. How can we describe step one? So from step one, we have our alcohol becoming an aldehyde. So we actually remove hydrogen okay, to form an aldehyde. It can be described as ox oxidation, or it also can be described as dehydrogenation, removal of hydrogen. Twenty-two. We can refer to the data booklet and check out the bond energy. Okay, 410, 350, and 340. We do not have this data, but then it will be easier to break CCL bond than CF bond because CF, the bond is shorter. So CCL bond is the weakest of all. Reducing ethanol using sodium boron hydride. The hydride is H minus. It is a nucleophile. So it will seek out your 
partial positive carbon here. Right, so you will require your H minus and then the H minus will attack your carbonyl group. Twenty four converting ethanol into H. So step by step we have to figure out what are the products using HCN and NACN it will be a step up reaction so these are the two things that's added to your ethanol and if we undergo hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid acidic hydrolysis your CN will become COOH so we have this as G and then we add an alcohol with corn sulfuric acid that will undergo esterification so here this carboxyl group will undergo esterification to become your ester over this side okay, so finally we have this product which is B Twenty five two bromo two methyl butane. So this will be the simplified structure. And then we are trying to replace this Br with OH. Understand that this is a tertiary halogen alkene. So it will undergo S N one reaction, meaning the Br will leave the molecule first to form a carbocation. So it is a heterolytic bond fission. Okay. And then once it forms a carbocation, your nucleophile will be attacking the carbocation. Twenty six. We are trying to change ethanol into ethanol because they say they are collecting the product under immediate distillation and then they say the yield is 70 percent what mass is collected so we try to form a, a simplified equation ethanol ethanol and from here we will multiply the mass of ethanol use 2.3 grams by 70 percent 1.6 grams 1 grams is successfully converted. From here, we will change it to number of moles divided by MR. So this is the number of moles of ethanol that is successfully converted. From this number of moles of ethanol, the same number of moles of ethanol will be obtained. 0 0.035 and then we multiply by the MR of ethanol. We will get 1.54 gram. So figure out the mass of ethanol successfully converted. Convert to moles. That will be the moles of your ethanol. If they say collected after reflux and all that, then it will be ethanoic acid. In this case, it's ethanol. Okay. 